When it comes to reporting Planet X, mainstream media and news networks all have the same third rail policy. No way, no how will they ever honestly report any Planet X system observations whatsoever. That being said, this policy, like any other, is subject to the occasional fluke. In other words, it's Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will, and in the case of NBC News, their affiliate in Sacramento, California, KCRA, was that fluke. In a live pre-dawn telecast on or about January 14, 2014, the morning news anchors of this NBC News affiliate, KCRA in Sacramento, California, aired live video from their own news helicopter. In it, they reported an observation of a planet they could not explain. Let's briefly view that broadcast. We are back. Stargazing. It is a celestial rock. Awakening. In space, if you will. Uh, Dirk, D oh, okay, Dirk, what is it? We're all like, it's, it's a planet? Is, is, is it the moon? Actually, what is it? we've been searching trying to find you in the newsroom because we know <laughs> not. Dirk, what is it? Well, I, that's interesting. I mean, I've been. I was, <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it the moon? I don't know. You'd have to back up. I'd have to be outside to really see, but that looks like a point of light. But they, and if it's close to the sun, where the sun's coming up, then more than likely that's... Uh, I can't believe that we could see Venus that close. But it is a planet, right? Because it's not twinkling, or is that, is that a myth? No, I, I would say that that's a planet, yeah, but... It's I, Saturn. It's hard. Okay, Tamara wants in on this one. It. She's been Googling. No, that can't be Saturn unless there's be. an eclipse going on. No, because you don't <laughs> see Saturn as a, with a chunk taken out of it. Maybe that's the you only see on. You only see the moon uh, that have a chunk like mm. that, and the only other planet that I know of that you see a chunk taken out of it like that would be Venus. Um, because it's on the inside planet. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter, they're all outside planets. Right. From and this, Earth, friends, is what it's like that. when you stop by the Weather Department <laughs> at any moment. Right. These yeah. are the kinds of conversations that but you will stumble into. I need to go outside and see it so Let's I can be sure what I'm looking at. Let's send you up in a chopper so you can investigate properly. How oh, I'd that? love to. That Agreed. would be great. Yeah, go up into the KCRA <laughs> Observatory and get back to us. <laughs> Thank you, Jerk. All right. Okay. What our analysis will show is that the KCRA morning news anchors observed two planets via their live news helicopter feed, specifically the planet Venus eclipsing the planet Nibiru. After seeing our findings, you, the viewer, can then decide for yourself. Is NBC News the first mainstream television network to unwillingly air a Nibiru report? Then we'll present our analysis of this new report, and finally we'll close with KCRA's response to our request for basic information about the broadcast. What is important to remember about this live pre-dawn KCRA report is that it was aired live. What you see is a real-time feed from a news helicopter after takeoff in the early morning well before sunrise. To illustrate the key points, let's review a series of video frames taken from this news report. Here you see that the cameraman is imaging an object in the sky and it is fairly round. Looking closer at the object of interest, we see that the camera is zoomed to such a wide setting that it's difficult for the camera to give us accurate details. However, with a color shift analysis, we do see patterns that are consistent with natural objects. It is important to note that when camera operators spot something of interest, they'll focus in on it, which is what we see here, now that the cameraman has zoomed in to a medium setting. Then, with a closer look at the object of interest, we see a deformation at the 2 o'clock position, especially when we study just the outline. Moving on, 
In this image, we see that the cameraman is fully zoomed in to a very tight setting. At this point, the question is, are we seeing a lens aberration? With this in mind, remember that these images are being captured from a moving helicopter. So what we do see is natural movement, absent any evidence of a lens aberration. Further evidence of this is the crossfade from the camera feed to the production studio at KCRA. Here we can still see this image in the crossfade. So what exactly are we looking at? Two planets. The first is Venus, in which we see the nighttime side of the planet as it eclipses the planet Nibiru, in which we see the daylight side of that planet. To help you understand how we drew this conclusion, let's begin with this planetary alignment for January 14, 2014, as depicted by the Solar System Scope Program. On that day, the Moon is behind Earth, so we know that it is impossible to say that one of these two objects could be the Moon. Likewise, given the alignment of Mercury and its relative size, we can rule out that planet as well. Which brings us to Venus. On this day, it was in an inferior conjunction directly between the Earth and the Sun. This is why Venus appears as a black disk as it eclipses Nibiru. To help put this in perspective, let's use this simple illustration of the phases of Venus. Here we see it on January 14, 2014. Because the Sun is directly behind it, what is presented to us on Earth is the night side of Venus. Conversely, were Venus in a superior conjunction on the opposite side of the Sun, we would see its full day side. This brings us to the question, where exactly was Venus in relationship to the Sun during this pre-dawn live helicopter video feed aired on January 14, 2014? Here we see that precise alignment with the Starry Night program. Please note the white line running across the bottom third of the screen. This represents the horizon as it was seen from Sacramento on that day. And here you see that the sun was below the horizon at that time. However, Venus, which is directly above the sun that day, was above the horizon. So now, let's assemble the various alignments we have into a complete picture. The key to this is that Venus was directly in front of Earth in an inferior conjunction. As you can see by the illustration here, what we saw of Venus was its night side. To further illustrate the point, let's use this photograph of Venus transiting the Sun. It is a black dot, and the commercial jet also captured in this photograph is equally black. This is consistent with the Sun being below the horizon and Venus being directly above it and the horizon as well. Ergo, Venus was accurately videographed in this live pre-dawn KCRA news broadcast. This brings us to the final question of the analysis. Was Venus eclipsing Nibiru as our analysis shows? In this KCRA broadcast, two planets were imaged. To understand why one is dark and one is bright, let's quickly review what we learned about the phases of Venus, which applies to any other planet in our solar system. When the planet is directly in front of the Sun, before us, we see its night side. And when it is directly behind our sun, before us, we see its day side. This was the case on January 14, 2014, where Venus is directly in front of the sun and Nibiru is directly behind it. But is it really Nibiru? And if it is, would it be possible to find corroborating images? On both accounts, yes. When we look at the field of view from Sacramento when that live camera feed was broadcast, the constellation Aquila was above and to the left of the Sun, Venus, and Nibiru. This is consistent with what we have reported in previous videos 
during this same relative span of time. Here we see an image by Richard Bullerup taken on December 13, 2013 in support of his own naked eye observation, which places Nibiru in the same region of the sky as a published observation by the 00 Skyview team on October 21, 2013. Note where the constellation Aquila appears in this region of the sky. Here we have another image of Nibiru captured by the Turrialba webcam on January 2013, 2014, which places Nibiru in the same region of the sky as Richard Bullerup's observation on December 13, 2013. And here, approximately, is where it appears when we add it to the previous two observations. Once again, note its relationship to the constellation Aquila. Here we have a subsequent image in support of another naked eye observation of Nibiru by Richard Bullerup on January 8, 2014, again in the same region of the sky. We therefore concluded that we have evidence of a clear pattern. But to make this even more complete, we also offer another image of Nibiru captured by the Turrialba webcam on February 12, 2014, which again places Nibiru in the same region of the sky. Taken all together, what we have are reliable observations of Nibiru by three different sources in the same region of the sky. And once again, we see the constellation Aquila which is also what we saw earlier in our analysis of the KCRA observation report. So, do the dots connect? Here we see an approximate pre-dawn position for Nibiru as it was observed by the live feed from the KCRA news helicopter. Therefore, what we now have are reliable observations from four different sources for the same exact object the planet Nibiru. With this in mind, let's look at that KCRA broadcast once again, so that you, the viewer, can compare our findings with what you now observe in this live broadcast recording. We are back. Stargazing. It is a celestial rock awakening in space if you will uh dirk D oh, okay dirk what is it we're all like it's, it's a planet is is, is it the moon Actually, what is we've it? been searching trying to find you in the newsroom because we know we know dirk what is it well I, that's interesting i mean i've been I was, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Is it, is it the moon? I don't know. You'd have to back up. I'd have to be outside to really see, but that looks like a point of light. But they, and if it's close to the sun where the sun's coming up, then more than likely that's... Uh, I can't believe that we can see Venus that close. But it is a planet, right? Because it's not twinkling, or is that is that a myth? No, I, I would say that that's a planet, yeah, but... It's I, Saturn. It's hard. Okay, Tamara wants in on this one. It. She's been Googling. No, that can't be Saturn unless there's be. an eclipse going on. No, because you don't see Saturn as with a chunk taken out of it. Maybe that's the you only see You only see the moon uh, that have a chunk like that, and the only other planet that I know of that you see a chunk taken out of it like that would be Venus. Um, because it's on the inside planet. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter, they're all outside planets. Right. From and this, Earth, friends, so is what it's like that. when you stop by the weather department <laughs> at any moment. Right. These yeah. are the kinds of conversations that but you will stumble into. I need to go outside and see it so Let's I can be sure what I'm looking at. Let's just send you up in the chopper at. so you can investigate properly. How oh, I'd that? love to. That Agreed. Would be great. Yeah, go up into the KCRA <laughs> observatory and get back to us. Thank you, Jerk. All right. Okay. In order to produce the most accurate analysis, I contacted Jim Stimson, the Assistant News Director for KCRA Sacramento, for additional information on February 2013-2015. In a follow-up email that day, I confirmed my request in writing as follows. I will be producing a video for my YouTube channel regarding this KCRA broadcast, and am requesting the following information from your station. 1. Exact date, time, and location of the video capture. We need this for plotting an accurate star chart. 2. Equipment used of particular importance is the lens. 3. Names of the news anchors that appear at the end of the clip. And 4. A 1080p MPEG video file, if possible, of the broadcast for detailed examination. 
I then received the following answer from Mr. Stimson on February 25, 2015. Marshall, thank you for your interest in our video. As a matter of policy, we only share our resources, news gathering information, and editorial content on a very limited basis with certain other news organizations. I am following up to let you know that your project is not something we are interested in being a part of. Jim Stinson, Assistant News Director, KCRA. For the record, we never asked KCRA to be a part of any project. We only asked them for information about one of their own live broadcasts. While Mr. Stimson showed an unwillingness to provide any information whatsoever, the one thing that stands out is this. KCRA denies nothing. This concludes our report. WTF! WTF! What the fuck does WTF mean? What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah.